Yeah, and uh, there we go. We got it. Looks like the match is underway, guys. It is uh, the first match of the uh, Junior World Championships. On screen is uh, Cody Yamamoto's team, which is going to be uh, Gardevoir, Zapdos, Hydreigon, Garchomp, Aegislash, and Kangaskhan. And again, uh, London Swans team was uh, Kangaskhan, Garchomp, Salamence, Wash Rotom, Aegislash, and Gardevoir. It looks like both players chose really fast here, Dwee. Right, and if you look at the team of both players, they actually have a lot of similarities in Kangaskhan, Garchomp, and Gardevoir, three of the most popular Pokemon in the metagame right now. And they kind of have a little bit different, but this is the exact same core. Salamence and Hydreigon, they kind of do the same thing, both really strong hitting, special, attack, special attacking, dragon types, and uh, Rotom, or Wash Rotom and Zapdos are both electric types that can kind of give support to Garchomp, as Garchomp can easily Earthquake into them. And, of course, Aegislash is also there as well, and Aegislash is one of those Pokemon that kind of didn't, wasn't so popular in the beginning of the format, but once the format began to develop, it became really known as a strong Pokemon to be used. That is very, very true. Now, it looks like uh, Gardevoir traced some inner focus here. And uh, it looks like we got the Zapdos and Kangaskhan lead there from uh, Koda. And from London, we have the Gardevoir and Kangaskhan lead. So both Kangs coming out real early here. Right, and Kangaskhan is actually a very good lead Pokemon for both these players as it provides Fake Out support. And Fake Out is going to target down one of the sides and make the, other, make the Pokemon flinch to possibly set up or get into a better position for either player. All right, Kangaskhan going Mega. There it is, setting up. Bring out Baby Kang. Always love that animation. I can watch that thing all day. <laughs> In fact, I get to watch it twice, probably. <laughs> there it is. All right, both Megas coming out. Setting up. All right, this is going to be a big turn one here. Yeah, and turn one is usually the most important turn in the game. All right, the double edge going to hit really, really hard. Into that Zapdos. Getting a little bit of damage from the Rocky Helmet there. Into the yellow, though, goes Zapdos. And Kangaskhan taking a lot from that recoil as well into the yellow. Seems to be about equal, but another double edge into Gardevoir. This might go down in one shot. There it is. Gardevoir drops on turn one. Oh my gosh, the recoil though is so, so real. <laughs> oh, and the paralysis onto Kangaskhan. So Kota getting himself in pretty good position right now. That Kangaskhan at 50% just from taking double edge recoil and the Rocky Helmet recoil. Uh, we see that the Rocky Helmet on Zapdos, not really a popular item on Zapdos, but it definitely worked there as you can see how much damage it did that Kangaskhan as Kota is actually able to take the first knockout with that Gardevoir. And Gardevoir is actually a very strong Pokemon with that Fairy Titan and that will come in handy against uh, Kota's uh, Hydreigon and Garchomp later on. Yeah, depending on what he brought, that could have been a huge loss early on there. So we do see that, unfortunately, that Kangaskhan uh, is paralyzed there. Might not be able to hit through that. We do see the Protect on Wash Rotom there. Kangaskhan is paralyzed! Oh my gosh, paying off on turn two already. Oh, but double, doubles up on the Rotom, and they block both of those shots with the Protect. Right, and uh, Kota right there really just trying to target down that Wash Rotom. Not really thinking that Kangaskhan is too big of a threat as it's paralyzed and the fact that if it does try to target down that Zapdos, it's probably going to get knocked out from Double Edge Recoil or even um, the Rocky Helmet Recoil. Kangaskhan that turn trying to Sucker Punch as you can see because it, it tried to move before every other Pokemon on the field and unfortunate that it did get paralyzed because at least getting off some damage is better than just not being able to move at all. Well, it looks like we actually see a Sucker Punch there from uh, Kota's Kangaskhan and picks up the feint. The Mega is down. Oh, and the Roost from Zapdos. It's going to be taking it back up into the green there. Oh my gosh, so much hit points coming back. And the Hydro Pump from Rotom. Going to do a decent amount of damage to Kangaskhan here into the red. The hanging on. Yeah, Kota taking a very quick 4-2 lead as Salamence decides to come in. And firing off that Intimate onto Kangaskhan is kind of a big deal, but at the same time that Kangaskhan is pretty weak right now, so Kangaskhan not really going to be able to field for too much longer as well. Yeah, that was a good Intimidate there. Uh, it's unfortunate that he's already down two Pokemon, but it could play a factor. Right, definitely. Uh, that Zapdos is going to be pretty problematic for London because that Zapdos revealing Roost means that it's actually probably trained in a lot of defense. And with Roost, it's going to be able to heal back most of its health and just be out there for so long. And I don't know if London's going to be able to find a way to knock it out, but he's definitely going to have to look for answers for it. I would agree with you there. It looks like we're going to see a Protect from Zapdos. I mean, to protect from Salamence. Oh, doubles up in the Salamence slot, protecting itself. Rotom hitting back with the Thunderbolt, getting rid of that Mega. So it's a 2v3 right now. Yeah. Getting close to evening it up. 
London uh, picking up that knockout. Good confidence boost right there to knock out that Mega Kangaskhan after his Mega Kangaskhan already fell. Really smart right there for Salamence to protect itself. Actually, important information to be revealed because we know now that, that Salamence is not Choice Scarf. Choice Scarf Salamence is probably one of the more popular Pokemon in the metagame right now, so... Interesting to see that London is not using that Scarf of Salamence. Yes, of course, uh, not carrying the Choice Scarf, uh, obviously with the Protect there. You right. definitely don't want to run Protect if you have a choice, uh, choice item on there. Some players actually have used Choice items with Protect just to play some mind games. So we'll be, we'll be seeing what exactly happens. All right, that really fast Garchomp fires off a Dragon Claw into Salamence, picking up the feint there. And a Thunderbolt as well from Zapdos into the Rotom slot, taking it down to about 50% hit points. And a Hydro Pump back from Rotom into Garchomp. There it is, down to the yellow. Tough spot though right now from London, but did get a lot of information. That Rocky Helmet's going to be huge. Right, and London's going to be a bit more careful about targeting down that Zapdos with his own Kangaskhan with that double edge. I mean, that's something that London's going to have to look for in game two, as right now it's Rotom versus a lot, like three more Pokemon from Kota's side. Yes, exactly. We do see the double up, obviously, under the Protect of the Rotom there, so no damage that turn. Maybe just trying to maybe see if he'll reveal something else. Right, try to see what uh, maybe moves that, that Garchomp is carrying, or see what else that Zapdos might be carrying that could be problematic for London in the future games. All right, looks like he's sticking with the Dragon Claw there. Procs a Citrus Berry. So, uh, unfortunately, now uh, Kota might know that he's got the Citrus Berry on that Rotom there. And the Thunderbolt uh, might be able to pick up the Feint on this. Down to zero. There's O oh, with the crit as well. It looks like uh, Kota Yamamoto taking game one of the Juniors World Finals. Right, and Kota showing exactly that he is here to win. And London is going to have to find a way to make this adjustment to get the upper hand on Kota. I mean, it, a lot of information has been revealed for both sides. London now knowing that that Zapdos is going to be problematic with that Rocky Helmet and the Roost and be, being able to fire off a Thunder Wave as well. Uh, that is probably Kota's only method of, of uh, speed control, uh, unless that Gardevoir also carries Trick Room, which I'm not exactly sure about. So London's going to have to find a way to really knock out that Zapdos because that's going to be so problematic for him. Yeah, I think you're right there, Dwee. The, the Zapdos might be a key Pokemon here with uh, some of those physical attackers for London. You know, he's not going to be wanting to hit into that very often. Right, and Kota now, seeing a lot of London teams, probably going to think that Zapdos might be his winning option against a lot of these things, as long as he can get it down to maybe, say, Zapdos versus a physical attacker like Kangaskhan or Garchomp. Mm -hmm. All right, another crucial turn one is going to be coming up here soon. I think both of our players uh, might have locked in their Pokemon. Let's uh, let's see if we're getting into the game here. There it goes. All right, both players are tossing out their Pokemon. Let's see what we got here. A Garchomp and Rotom lead here for London. And Kota bringing the uh, same lead, actually. Kota Yamamoto going with uh, the Kangaskhan and Zapdos. If it's not broken, I mean, you saw how well it did for him in game one, so... You know, not really needing to adjust too much his leading strategy as he saw that it paid off. And London trying to change it up, going Garchomp, Wash Rotom. And that's going to be a bit interesting to see how it plays out. Garchomp with Rough Skin is going to be able to kind of deal back some damage to that Kangaskhan if it does decide to target down that Garchomp. And at the same time, that Wash Rotom will probably be able to fire off will o -Wisps onto the Kangaskhan to kind of slow it down and weaken it a bit. Yeah, and some Rock Slides here could be potentially useful, so we'll see what happens. Right. Uh, Rock side flinches are always a thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> they are always a thing, Dwee. <laughs> They're always a thing. All right, King's Cod going mega there for Kota Yamamoto. Garchomp protecting. And Rotom protecting. Nice, so not wanting to take any uh, potential fake-out damage here this turn and uh, get a little scout off. The double edge actually decides to go just full-on power. Thunderbolt as well, so uh, no damage and finds out kind of what his opponent's doing. Right, and uh, really... Good move right there from London. Kind of just wanted to play it safe, see what that Kangaskhan was going to do, see what that Zapdos was going to do. And Zapdos, the only move that I can really get to kind of set up with a fake out support from Kangaskhan might be Tailwind, but not exactly sure if that Zapdos is actually carrying Tailwind. We've seen Roost, Thunder Wave, and Thunderbolt. Um, Zapdos's might not carry Protect. Uh, it could have gone for the Tailwind if it really had it, but right now. London's got to figure out a way to get around these two leads that were so problematic for him in game one. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're going to see what happens right now. Switches out the Rotom. Doesn't like that matchup there. Brings in the Aegis Slash. And Garchomp with the Rock Slide. 
Oh, show me the flincher. Let's see what happens. A critical hit and uh, double edge. Doesn't affect Aegis Slash. Great switch there. Thunderbolt, though, doubling up into that slot. Aegis Slash will take neutral damage, but in shield form. Oh, picking up the paralyze is Coda. Pretty big. Aegis Slash, typically a slower Pokemon, so not necessarily the big, a big deal in speed, but could get that paralysis. Right. Uh, Aegis Slash is one of those weird Pokemon where you kind of want to be slower to stay in shield form as long as you can, so that paralysis speed drop actually helps it because it's going to be, oh, it's usually going to be always the last Pokemon move to switch into sword form, but the paralysis chance to not move is actually very scary right now. Yeah, that's what you don't want to see. All right, we get a switch here into Garchomp for Coda. And a protect actually from Garchomp uh, for London here on the bottom screen. Double edge, Garchomp protects itself. Aegis Slash substitute. He's getting back behind it. I love an Aegis Slash behind a substitute with leftovers. Such a strong move there. I, I think Aegis Slash with substitute is probably one of my more favorite Pokemon in the metagame because it's just able to stay out on the field for so long, especially if it can kind of alternate between King's Shield substitute and attacking so that, you know, the leftovers recovery actually brings it back to full health. And we see that that Kangaskhan really wanted to knock out that Garchomp, but it's going to be taking back a lot of damage from rough skin, rough skin damage and the double edge recoil itself. Yeah, exactly. I I'm ready for the first big knockout. This is huge. Both, <laughs> both uh, trainers have four Pokemon still. Right, and an interesting thing to note is that both these Kangaskhans on both players' sides opted for double edge over return just for the sheer power of it. Exactly. All right, we see the Sucker Punch here. Onto the Garchomp, actually. Going to be uh, giving a little bit of damage back to Kangaskhan there with the rough skin. And a second hit there from Kangaskhan, and more damage from the Ruskin takes Kangaskhan into the yellow. And a Dragon Claw from Garchomp! There it is! The, Gar the Garchomp from London hitting Koda's Garchomp, doesn't quite take it out. The rough skin damage though hitting back. And another Dragon Claw, there it is! It's gonna finish off that Garchomp, but we're gonna see some damage of its own. So the first knockout is picked up by Koda, and down into the red is Garchomp. Yeah, and uh, both Pokemon Kota side are, right now are both heavily damaged. All right, let's see what the Aegis Slash is going to target here. This could be big. Still behind the Substitute. It's also important to note, Flash Cannon. Into the Kangaskhan slot. Oh my gosh, I don't think he picked it up. I don't know if he picked it up. Oh my gosh, Kangaskhan hanging on with a sliver of health. Right, both Pokemon right now on Kota side heavily damaged and that's kind of problematic because Kangaskhan can still fire off one more attack, but Kangaskhan coming back in, going to be able to fire off Fake Out support if it really needed to. So right now, London can easily pick up a knockout with Kangaskhan Fake Out, and Aegis Slash will probably be able to hang in there uh, and pick up the second knockout if it really wants to. But the question is, will Aegis Slash still have that substitute up after this turn? That's going to be very important because Aegis Slash hiding behind a substitute has so much more room to maneuver than just an Aegis Slash out in the open. I agree with you there, Dwee. It looks like we're going to get that uh, mega form right now. King is gone, bringing out Baby King. Uh, this could be a good turn for London. Let's see what happens here. Fake out into the King is gone slot, getting rid of that mega there. Very nice. And let's see what Garchomp decides to do for Koda. We've got, the, we've got a big Earth Tech. It's going to do a lot of damage. Most likely going to faint that substitute there. And uh, does almost 50% on King is gone. Oh, substitute's gone. But we're going to get an attack, I think, with a Flash Cannon. Dropping that Garchomp now. Looks to be a... Uh, oh, and the critical hit. <laughs> crit so <laughs> mattered there. <laughs> Need that extra damage. All right, H Slash getting a touch of life back from Leftover. So still in a great position for London here. Right. London uh, definitely going up 3-2 to two now. And that was actually a really good prediction right there from Kota, actually. Uh, I believe he wanted to try to Sucker Punch with his own Kangaskhan, and he knew that Kangaskhan was going to get knocked out anyway, so he decided to Earthquake that turn to try to do some damage to both Kangaskhan and Aegislash. Yeah, no, it was a great call. All right, we see the pressure being exerted by Zapdos there. And uh, with both these Pokemon out right now, we see all of uh, Kota's team with the Gardevoir in back and Zapdos still out. Again, Zapdos is one of those problematic Pokemon that Aegislash, Aegislash might be able to take out. Okay, looks like we're going to get a switch into Rotom here. Stance change for Aegislash Slash going King Shield. So no damage there that turn. Gardevoir could be carrying that uh, Shadow Ball, which uh, would not uh, feel very good into a Sword Form Aegislash. Slash. All right, there it is. The Moon Blast, though, actually targeting uh, the Kang slot, hitting the Wash Rotom, taking it down into the yellow, and it's dropping its special attack. That's tough for Rotom there, special attacker. Okay, getting a little bit of life back up from its Citrus Berry that we saw last game. And the Thunderbolt Aegislash protects itself, so nice, not, not a ton of damage, but unfortunate on that special attack drop. 
Right, and uh, Rotom right now not going to be able to do too much damage to either of these Pokemon. Uh, Gardevoir itself is actually a pretty decently bulky Pokemon too. And we saw exactly how bulky Zapdos is, and uh, it has a lot of staying power with that Ruse, so... London right now needs to find a way to knock out that Zapdos really, and knock out that Gardevoir as well to uh, really win it. Yeah, definitely. So we see the Moonblast actually into the Aegis Slash and the Thunderbolt, so doubling up. Maybe uh, fearing that slot, maybe trying to get it less so it can't substitute. We'll see what happens here. The Thunderbolt on Gardevoir does huge damage. Actually, a critical hit! A critical hit takes it into the yellow. All right. Oh, going into Blade Form. Shadow Ball! Who did he target? The Gardevoir's gonna drop here! London with a big feint, taking the 3-1 to one lead right now. Dwee getting a little bit of help back on that Leftovers. Right, and right now it's Zapdos versus Wash Rotom, Aegislash, and Kangaskhan still in the back. So Zapdos has a lot of work to do if he really wants to try to steal his victory away. Yes, it, it definitely. It's, it's, it's got an uphill battle with that Roost, that Rocky Helmet. It could be pretty strong here. We're seeing the Thunderbolt. Might pick up the feint on the Aegislash here. Does. Aegislash down to zero. All right, Kangaskhan is going to be coming in here after the Rotom. He's a little less than the Avoid. Really needed that to hit to get that chip damage over time. Right, and right now it's going to be Zapdos with, uh, against that Wash Rotom and that Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan has to be careful. It has absolutely no way to recover its health, whereas Zapdos does. We saw Double Edge do a good amount of damage, but it will definitely not be able to pick up that knock on Zapdos. And at the same time, that Wash Rotom with that special attack drop will not be able to do too much damage to Zapdos back. All right, decides to go with Fake Out here. Taking a big risk, gonna take a lot of damage from that Rocky Helmet. Maybe even more damage than the Fake Out did. Let's see what we get here from Wash Rotom here. Hydro Pump actually ends up connecting, but that special attack reduction could be rough. Oh my gosh, it's in the red. What does he do here? This is a huge turn. Right, right now, the unfortunate thing is that Kangaskhan's gonna be able to outspeed that Zapdos and probably knock it out. So, really good position right now for London. And Kota really just not gonna be able to do anything there about this. There it is, you're right. The double edge right into that slot. He is gonna take damage from the Rocky Helmet, but Kangaskhan and Rotom, London taking game two. Guys, we have a game three. We this have a exciting. game three for the Junior World Championships right now. Right, and London played that game so beautifully. He realized all his options. He, he played meticulously. He thought about what he needed to do to pick up that victory against Kota. So back to the drawing board for both players. Wouldn't be surprised to see if Kota decided to change up his uh, leads, which he did not change last time. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, like we always like to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so <laughs> Kota didn't. And, and actually, you know, it, it wasn't it, it wasn't uh, a bad lead either. You know, just things didn't work out for him on that particular particular turn, you know, you just gotta, maybe it's the choices you make. Right, that last turn, uh, if Zapdos did decide to protect itself from getting faked out, you know, maybe something could have happened because that fake out hit and then the Hydro Pump hit as well. If Zapdos maybe protected itself that turn and decided to roost the next turn, it might have been able to pull it off for uh, London. Exactly. Or for Kota, sorry. Yes, 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 for Kota. So, uh, couldn't be really any better. I, I can't believe it. I'm so excited to be here again. Going into Game 3, the Junior World Championships, guys. This is this is it. For those of you that might just be tuning in, you're watching the Pokemon World Championships live from Washington, D.C., and these are the best players in the entire world in their age group. Right. And uh, one thing to note, though, that Aegislash from London kind of gave uh, Kota a couple, little bit of problems. I mean, it was pretty bulky. It stayed out on the field for a good amount of time, was able to set up a substitute, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if Kota decided to bring something that could actually knock out that Aegislash really quickly, such as his own Aegislash or maybe even Hydreigon. No, it's, that's a great thing uh, to note there, Dwee. Uh, I love that you're picking up on that, that information there. I mean, that substitute was pretty much a game winner there, I think. That right. Aegislash got, him, got it for him. And it really just drew away most of the attacks from uh, London's other Pokemon, so Aegislash really paid off for for Camp London that, that that game. Yeah, uh, I, would you uh, say that was his MVP there, Dewey? I think that might have been his MVP <laughs> in that game. But of course, you know, Kangaskhan and Rotom was, were the Pokemon that were able to finish it off. Right? Yes, don't forget guys, uh, Hashtag play Pokemon. Let us know who your MVP Pokemon are, and you might see your tweets featured live on stream. All right, guys, let's hear it for the final game. We're going to see a new world champion in just a moment here. This is it. I mean, third game, world championship finals for the junior division. Both players right now playing for $3,500 in scholarship. Second place will get $1,500 in scholarship. So, you know, I think the most important thing to these kids is the fact that they get to crown themselves as the, as the world champion. Yes, that is uh, a huge accomplishment. All right, it looks like the lead from London is uh, going to be the Garchomp Kangaskhan and uh, Kota not switching it up. Zapdos Kang again. I think he has faith in his uh, leads right now. Uh, going to be interesting to see if he did decide to change it up in the back, but Kangaskhan Zapdos, I mean, it's, it's brought him here, you know, maybe. So 
Gonna yeah. have to see what they do. Sometimes you gotta play with what you're comfortable with. Right, definitely. And I agree with you there, Justin. Uh, right now, I mean, both Kangaskhan's really having that fake out support gonna be so vital for the teams because Kangaskhan, you know, you can decide to fake out that guard chomp and have Zappos be able to do whatever it wants this turn. Exactly. All right, we're gonna get that Mega Kangaskhan there. I believe, uh, I believe that was from uh, Coda there. And let's see what we get. A fake out. Going non-mega there, I think, actually. Gets a critical hit. The Kangaskhan flinches and can't move. Rock slide. Oh, no, the avoid. I think it might have been uh, the Zapdos there. Oh, no, Zapdos avoiding the rock slide. That was huge. And a Thunder Wave going to slow down one of these Pokemon there, slowing down Kangaskhan. But interesting not to, to go mega. Interesting to see why he did not go mega. I would believe that he is probably carrying the inner focus ability, which is why he decided not to mega, so that if... Kota's Kangaskhan did decide to fake out the Kangaskhan slot, he'd still be able to at least provide fake out support. Yeah, you're exactly right, Dwee. I think that was a great call. Um, but it looks like uh, looks like there was no uh, no damage there onto his Kang. Right. And still, that Zapdos, I don't believe it's carrying anything that can actually hit that Garchomp. So yes. Garchomp's going to be a Pokemon that Kota wants to knock out so yes. that Zapdos can come in and, All and right. do damage. It looks like we're going to see the switch into Age of Slash there, and you're exactly right, Dwee. Uh, that Garchomp is going to be a big threat. That's going to be Kota's number one Pokemon to maybe get rid of here. Now going Mega for London. Garchomp with the Rock Slide again. Could pick up a flinch here. Could pick up a big flinch. All right, King into the yellow. Oh, the flinch! Are you kidding me? The flinch on Kangaskhan! This is huge! Oh my gosh, he's going to pick up the fade! He drops the Mega! He drops the Mega! I'm throwing stuff! Oh, this is crazy! This is crazy! And we see exactly how powerful Mega Kangaskhan is, doing so much damage as Aegis Slash decides to come in, thought it could come in for uh, free, and it, it kind of did. But at the same time right now, Kota is playing without his Mega Kangaskhan. That is huge. That was a huge turn. Now we see the Garchomp in for Kota. All right, both, uh, both trainers facing each other down in this white-hot battle. <laughs> and uh, Kangaskhan, of course, still going to be able to do damage to Aegis Slash if it uh, can catch it with a Sucker Punch. And of course, Garchomp does not mind facing off against Aegislash with its ability to use Earthquake. All right, there it is. We see the Protect on Garchomp. Oh, protecting itself. An Earthquake, though. There it is, doing uh, damage to his own King's Combat, doing a lot of damage to that Aegislash, and it still manages to get up behind the Substitute, so that could be big here in the future. Oh, no. There it is, and some leftovers. Right, uh, that Paralysis is not too important because uh, that Kangaskhan was going to move last and Garchomp protect itself. Uh, Kangaskhan not really going to be able to hit Aegislash at all usually unless it's carrying, say, Crunch or something like that. But Sucker Punch is usually the more preferred option unless it decided Power Punch its own uh, Garchomp. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, mo most likely uh, nothing would be getting damaged that turn from Kangaskhan anyway. Oh no, the Paralysis though, maybe on the Sucker Punch that time. There goes the Dragon Claw into that Garchomp slot, going to do a ton of damage! Down to 20 hit points! The Ruskin's going to do a little bit of damage back to that Garchomp as well. Garchomp Dragon Claw! Oh no, I don't know if it's going to pick it up! No, it's down to the red, and the Ruskin's going to return! He's going to run to lose his Garchomp! Kota's still hanging on! Oh my gosh, this is huge! Aegis Slash going to get to attack here! Free shot on Kangaskhan! Out in the open! Goes into blade form here. Flash cannon. 90 hit points. Oh my gosh! 5 to 0. This is huge. Kota flipping the script. Kota taking pretty strong lead right now. Uh, considering the fact that he already lost a mega, that Garchomp surviving that Dragon Claw is actually huge because now Kota is at such a pretty big advantage right now, depending on what, of course, London has in the back. All right, looks like the Aegislash is now going to come out for London. It was a really, really important uh, Pokemon last time for him, and the Rotom. Yeah, right now, uh, that Rotom is going to be pretty important, but at the same time, he needs to figure out what he can do against that Zapdos that's still in the back, still still waiting in the back. And I think Aegislash and Rotom, if they are not damaged too much, can take on Zapdos one-on-one, -on -one, or two-on-one. -on -one. So London right now needs to figure out a way to knock out both these Pokemon as soon as possible without taking that much damage. Yeah. Definitely needs to do that. We see the, the King Shield here from Coda. And the King Shield as well, so not wanting to take any damage here. The Earthquake. Nice, Rotom Levitate's not gonna affect it. All right, Hydro Pump hit. There it is, baby, the Hydro Pump lands on Garchomp. 
And it's out of here. This is a 2v2. <laughs> uh, Zapdos and Aegislash on Kota side versus Aegislash and Rotom on London side. Really good prediction right there from London to realize that Garchomp really wanted to knock out that Aegislash and thought that, you know, I need to protect this Aegislash and allow Rotom to be able to knock out that Garchomp. And right now, that definitely paid off because it's 2 on 2 right now in this really close game. Yeah, this is, this is incredible. I'm about to flip a table over here, man. Uh, I can't handle it. This is game three, guys, of the Juniors World Championship. We see a Thunderbolt from Zapdos into the Aegislash. This in shield form really eats it up. Rotom Thunderbolt as well. Oh my gosh, can it fade the substitute, though? That's going to be huge. The substitute fades. The substitute does fade. We see the chance here to the Aegislash. It, this is big. It's going blade form. Shadow Ball, though. Is it going to be enough to get it in shield form? Oh! It picks it up. The Aegislash fades. The Aegislash fades, and a little bit of life back in the leftovers. Well, that is so unfortunate for London, thinking that that Aegislash would be able to hang on for one more turn to pick up that knockout in Aegislash. And both players realizing that the key to victory right there is knocking out the Aegislash, deciding to double down on the Aegislash slots. And that is so unfortunate for London, as right now he has to figure out a way to have Rotom be able to knock out both Zapdos and Aegislash. All right, looks like uh, Aegislash is going to go into King Shield form here. The Thunderbolt there from Zapdos is going to be uh, chipping away at this Rotom. And a Hydro Pump going back at it. Knowing that you most likely see the King Shield, a ton of damage here. All right, getting a little bit of life back up from the leftovers there on Aegislash. Yeah, sticky situation right now for London because you see that that Hydro Pump, uh, Rotom's strongest attack is only going to be able to do 50% to Zapdos. But at the same time, Zapdos can easily just roost it off and heal back that 50%. While Aegis Hash is going to be free to hit that road and wash, or wash road and back. Yeah, that is very unfortunate. And, and exactly like you said, we do see the roost back up to almost full health. Hydro Punk from Rotom. Again. Oh my oh. gosh, is that a critical hit? Can we see two in a row? Is it possible? Could it happen? All right, Aegis Hash going Blade Form, Shadow Ball. We're going to do some nice neutral damage to this Rotom here. Going to most likely proc that Citrus Berry that I think we saw earlier. Going to take it back into the yellow, but almost up to 50%. And right now, I mean, Zapdos and Aegislash staring down this Rotom. This could be it. This could be the final turn if Zapdos and Aegislash are able to do enough damage to this Rotom. And yeah. it most likely will be. And that's really unfortunate for London, but he played an amazing set if otherwise. All right, we do see, actually see a Protect on Zapdos. We see the Protect and the Aegislash still in Blade form. Oh, there he goes back. Okay. There it is. Shield form maybe uh, just getting a little scout off there. And we're going to see the Rotom go with a Thunderbolt, actually. Into, yeah, that, uh, into the Zapdos slot. Into the Zapdos, yeah, slot. Into the yeah, Zapdos slot. So really, Rotom trying to take out that Zapdos, seeing if it can actually pick up that knockout, as uh, both of Coach's Pokemon really just decided to protect himself this turn. Didn't want to open himself up to any opportunity to, be, oh. to lose this match. There it is. Oh my gosh, one shot, a critical hit. We have a new world champion. It is going to be Kota Yamamoto from Japan.